We have Alan Bergstein on the line, who has written a, a couple of uh, editorials uh, from here in South Florida about the situation of the Parkland massacre at the, uh, um, the name of the high school is Stoneham? I don't know. It's Marjorie Stoneham High School, I think, in Parkland, Florida. Okay. Very, very affluent, very affluent neighborhood. It, it's an affluent neighborhood. It's a good school. It's supposedly ranked among one of the, the smartest schools in South Florida, well, in all of the state, isn't it? Absolutely. It's just about the top school in South Florida, in all of Florida. Okay. And on, on Valentine's Day, everyone knows that there was uh, a, a shooter who uh, terrorized the school and uh, not only killed 17 people, 17 but also, people. But also uh, wounded many and, uh, and and traumatized many in the melee. Uh, but what seems to be happening in that uh, district? Because there seems to be uh, a tremendous press uh, of uh, demonstration and media attention on, on the call for gun control solely uh, at the expense of any of the other systemic failures involved in not, not prosecuting, uh, not arresting this fellow, keeping an eye on him. Uh, letting this happen, and uh, of course, uh, on the day there are also many failures. But there seems to be no, uh, there's no push for that on any of the demonstrations. And then, uh, just uh, within two days after the event, there seems to be a politicization of this uh, disaster for uh, Democrat political purposes against Republican uh, points and uh, platforms. So, uh, first of all, uh, Mr. Bergstein. Um, do you have a background in education? Yeah, I was a principal in the South Bronx for many years, which is a terrible, terrible neighborhood. Uh, in no way, shape, or form is it close to the quality of education that we have down here in that school in Parkland, nor is the, quali is the, quality, of the, uh, the quality of the students any better. And the parents down here are, are all totally, complete, concerned parents. Uh, they are professionals. They are doctors. They are lawyers. They are dentists. They are all college educated. Uh, the minimum home in Parkland is about $800,000. So this is an extremely, extremely affluent and politically active community. Now, people think that the state of Florida is uh, a swing state. There are many Republican voters. Uh, what about this particular area? This particular area is heavily Democrat. It is located in Broward County. Broward County is just above uh, Miami-Dade County, and it is probably the most heavily Democrat county in the nation, controlled heavily controlled Democrat county in the nation. If you've ever heard of Debbie Watson Schultz, who was the head of the Democrat National Committee, uh, she's in Chicago in Broward County, and she controls Broward County. OK. Um, you have a group organization which you lead here. What do you call it? It's called the Judeo-Christian Republican Club of Palm Beach County. We're just north of Broward County. OK. And, the, and this occurred in, in, uh, in Broward County in uh, uh, I think five of the uh, 17 casualties were Jewish, uh, uh, and belonged to a number of them belonged to uh, a Parkland area synagogue called uh, a Kol Tikva. Kol Tikva, yeah. yeah, yeah, you're right, you're right. It's it's run by uh, I believe the name is Brad Boxman. He's the mm -hmm. rabbi of uh, Kol Tikva. I believe, uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Uh -huh. He's a rabbi. He's a uh, uh, I believe this is a reform cigar. Uh -huh. and was, was this uh, Rabbi Brad Boxman, was he involved in uh, politicizing this issue, in, uh, in, in bringing some of the, uh, the, the students from the school up to Tallahassee during the week of the massacre? Absolutely, absolutely. As I, as I understand it, uh, he uh, officiated at the funeral of one of the kids. And then uh, he, I don't know if he rented the bus, but he led a uh, a group, a contingent of students up to Tallahassee to politicize this event, to call for gun control. Uh -huh. um, he did not call for more security in the school, nor did he call for uh, the accountability of the school board uh, to report the students who were dangerous, possible dangers to the community, to the sheriff's office, nor did he complain about the FBI, nor did he complain about the sheriff who controls uh, Broward County, that's uh, Scott Israel. He went up there to <laughs> basically to have a political joint with the students while on school time. This was during school days. He brought them up to Tallahassee, which is about an eight-hour trip from mm -hmm. Park Run, about an eight-hour trip, which means 16 hours round trip. Mm -hmm. And he brought these kids and used them as political pawns up in Tallahassee. 
Uh -huh. But it, it must not have been just like a trip to the a museum. This, it sounds like it, 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 uh, they had uh, buses and an organization beyond those of the, uh, the local school and, and synagogue. That's what I understand. I don't see how uh, a school could organize such a trip because it's not their responsibility. Their responsibility is basically to teach kids, and the synagogue is basically uh, a religious institution uh, dealing with uh, the religion, and it has nothing to do with politics. But uh, for one day, and continuing until today, these kids are being used as political pawns. Very shameful. There was not even time to mourn the students mm -hmm. and the teachers and faculty who were lost, rather than spend time in mourning and uh, helping the families of those pe people who were killed tragically. They went up there to politicize. And these are 14, 15, and 16, 17-year-old kids. Where does this organizing come from? I have no idea, except I can only surmise mm -hmm. that it was a political thing. In my mind, I think that the politicians, the Democrats, were drumming their fingers mm -hmm. and tapping their toes waiting for a situation like this to occur and watching their, the, the minute hands on their clocks. And finally it happened. They were waiting for the situation to occur. It happened in South Florida and, and Broward County being possibly the most Democrat county in the nation. They jumped right on the bandwagon. Signs were, ma were magically produced. T-shirts were magically produced. Kids were hoarded on buses. And the school board said basically, yes, we'll give you the day off, not to mourn, to grieve, to support the, 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 the tragic families whose kids were lost, but we give you time to go to Tallahassee to politicize this event. Not these, meeting writing and arithmetic. These young people are, are involved in a, a culture of uh, video game violence, violent video games. It's their new sport, esports, of shooting. Um, and, and so the notion of, uh, of vilifying any uh, Second Amendment people who would like to have done it, it seems a bit hypocritical because uh, one could argue that Nicholas Cruz was uh, influenced and uh, desensitized killing by so many of these things. And yet it seems now that uh, anyone who's opposed to this gun control seems uh, would be uh, treated socially outside the pale, which would include any candidates, Republican candidates, not only those who were supported by the NRA or have supported the NRA or who like the NRA or like having just but it, it seems like a divide in the society. What do you feel is, is happening at this stage? Well, first of all, I didn't see these kids uh, going up to Tallahassee on weekends. I didn't see these kids going to the many, many movie theaters we have here, uh, picketing the movie theater, saying no more violence in the movies. Uh, I didn't see them calling up all of the TV networks and saying no more violence on TV. I didn't call them. I didn't see them contacting Netflix on their own time and saying no more violent movies on Netflix. Instead, they were used for politics. They could very well have done that, uh, but they did not do that. I could, I'm making a joke out of it. They could have gone into uh, wrestling matches, which the high school has. Wrestling, to me, is violence. You know, you're pinning someone down. Mm -hmm. You're physically uh, mm -hmm. uh, suborning somebody, but they didn't do that. They were used as political opponents. It is very shameful. This was done in a freshman building, which means the kids are 14 and 15 years old. Mm -hmm. What do these kids know? about gun control. What do mm -hmm. they know? And why call on them? They are not voters. Mm -hmm. uh, what experience do they have in life? They have none. Uh, why didn't they pick at the school board and say, listen, this is a very wealthy community. Let's tax each homeowner $50 a month so we could have had a couple of more security people uh, on campus. Why didn't they uh, pick at the sheriff's office and say, listen, why did you have one sleepy security guy on this 25-acre campus and he was nowhere to be found. He was, uh, it was reported. And they knew this immediately, that he was outside the building, fearful of going in. Mm -hmm. And three other sheriff's deputies were outside, hunkered behind vehicles, saying that uh, they were ordered not to go in because their uh, body cameras uh, were not on them or they were not working. Mm -hmm. we, did not, we did not hear this immediately. There was a cover-up immediately. All of this was known immediately. In today's technological age, you know everything that happens. And mm -hmm. this only was pulled out by leaks, and by questioning of uh, people in authority. Mm -hmm. How do you feel about uh, the the way that the Republican Party is responding to what seems to be a politicization of this uh, tragedy? Well, they're being forced to react to it. They're being forced to backtrack and react. Uh, in fact, they're talking about bump stocks, which had absolutely nothing to do with this. In fact, bump stock, 
bump stocks were permitted legal under President Obama. He signed the law permitting bump stocks to be sold uh, in retail shops. The Republican Party is reacting. And the media, which is basically uh, part of the Democrat Party, jumped on this right away, and everyone knows that the real problem with the shooting in Parkland was not the cruise kit, not the lack of response on the part of the sheriff's office, not that the FBI uh, let down uh, and refused to follow up on its lead, but it was the fault of the NRA mm -hmm. and weapons. Mm -hmm. We have many weapons uh, that uh, don't kill people, but when it happens to be done, this is basically a move. Once they start with uh, the rifles, banning the rifles and the AR-15s, and he did not, the kid did not use an automatic weapon, by the way. He used uh, a rifle that required each bullet uh, to be fired off by a pull of the, of the finger. This next thing then will be to ban all weapons. This is the beginning of the move to ban all weapons. So I ask you, if I live in Florida and I have to give up my weapon, if I have one, and I depend on the police department, I have to depend on the, like the Broward County Sheriff's Office to respond, Look, look how long it took them to get to the school, and look how incompetent and inept they were. Mm -hmm. Wouldn't it be better if I had my own weapon to defend myself? How? And now, that, now they're talking about arming teachers in schools. So what I heard on TV is the liberals say, teachers should not be armed, assuming that every teacher would be forced to carry a weapon. That's not so. If you have five teachers in a faculty of 80 or 90 mm -hmm. who are licensed gun carriers, trained, possibly ex-law enforcement or ex-military, why can't they carry a pistol and uh, to defend their class, use that pistol, instead of barricading the door to the classroom and locking the door, waiting and hoping that the, the, the violent intruder would not enter the classroom? Why don't they have these teachers on? After all, you had one of the uh, uh, civilian security guards. He was not a security guard. He was just there to oversee. He was also a football coach. He was mm -hmm. killed. Had he had a weapon, he would have fired back and killed the intruder. Mm -hmm. But well, it, it seems like the decision was going beyond just uh, um, gun control, but uh, to the people who support or who don't oppose gun control. And that uh, a candidate, for example, any candidate, and I'm assuming that the Republican candidate oppose uh, increased gun control. Let's say even beyond, even if they would go uh, and, and uh, go for assault weapons, for instance, the notion that they don't go far enough for the the Democrat supported uh, the media supported Democrats could make um, could make the candidates untenable Republican candidates and Republican voters untenable socially and and uh, civically for instance is that something that your group is concerned about absolutely because if we uh, as conservatives who say listen we believe uh, uh, in the right to carry the Second Amendment the right to carry uh, because once you uh, remove one civil right, the next one is sure to come. They'll be removing the right to free speech, which they're already trying to do in Congress, the Democrats. Mm -hmm. uh, we believe that we have to stand forcefully. And uh, I, I ask my Democrat uh, relationships. I say to them, listen, if you're, you are against the use of, uh, against people owning guns, they say, absolutely right. And I say to them, you believe that no one should own weapons. They say, absolutely right. This should be a weapon free country. So I say to them, then are you in favor of having someone who committed a crime using a weapon? Are you in favor of immediately giving that person a 50th sentence for using a weapon in a commission of a crime? Automatic. An automatic uh, penalty of 50 years in prison for using a weapon in a crime. Would you be in favor of that? You know, they will say no. I say why? I say, it would impact minorities inappropriately. Well, say, really? Well, wasn't there an aspect of that involved in, uh, in reducing the number of uh, high school reported crimes in this area? Well, yeah, you brought up a point that I was going to get to next. Uh, in Broward County, Broward County had a relationship with the police department, an agreement, an agreement that crimes within schools would not be reported on paper so that the schools would look great when it came to the end-of-the-year report on violent crime. In other words, if school A has a reduced number of crimes and meets a certain uh, standard, they would get federal grants. In other words, there's an incentive to reduce crime in school. Mm -hmm. So rather than actually reduce crimes in school, let's reduce the reporting of actual crimes in schools. To the same effect, that means we would get more federal funding because it looks like we're good schools. 
It's like changing the, the, the scores on kids' exams to raise the scores on the exams. And at the end of the year, said, look at this. Our kids are reading 20 points higher than they read last year. It's a fake out. Mm -hmm. well, and people, th this, people, is, this, is, this, is, this is criminal. People might imagine that this takes place in the inner city to uh, you know, to do the effect of uh, not making the areas seem so dangerous and then the school seems so bad. But how does something like this take place in, in so affluent a suburb as Parkland? Well, it, it isn't. Uh, the, just because you're an affluent parent does not mean that uh, you have uh, uh, the knowledge of what goes on within the school system. First of all, it makes the kids look better because when they apply to college, they say, oh, look at this kid came from a great school. Uh -huh. Very little violence. And not every parent is so concerned with what happens within the school. There's an assumption on the part of these wealthy parents that I'm sending their kids to a great school. Mm -hmm. uh, kids all drive to school in Mercedes. They drive to school in Audi's, what have you. So they have swimming pools in the backyard. Uh, this, this is not going to happen here. And uh, it looks good for our school. And who knows? They may not even know about it. It may have been something that was silenced. We're speaking with former New York City High School principal Alan Bergstein. Junior, 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 high, junior high. Junior high school principal. And it must have been tougher, the junior high school age, with those adolescents, was it? Well, yeah, but uh, I, I was in the South Bronx, totally different family background. Uh -huh. uh, poverty as opposed to affluence. Uh -huh. uh, these kids in Parker are 98% are going to go on to college. Uh, they're not going to go out and uh, take menial jobs. They're not going to be uh, 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 workers. They're not going to be porters. They're not going to be uh, yeah. people working with their hands. They're going to be right. professionals. Right. And these kids, were, these kids could very well, the families could very well have supported an extra three or four people with weapons, trained people, but then that does not look well. That does not look good. In other words, if I go to school and I see an armed cop walking around, that does not look good. Mm -hmm. It sends the wrong message. I want a school where everything looks great. And they pay the penalty for that. And I, I, right now, at every single school in this country, there is concern that it's going to happen to me next. And you're going to see that the school budgets are going to have to be raised uh, to accommodate uh, the payments of armed guards. They do not come cheap. Mm -hmm. And uh, they're going to have to do this. This is going to be, have to include, this is going to be included in their budgets. But why couldn't the FBI have stopped this months ago mm -hmm. or a year ago mm -hmm. when they got reports of Nicholas Cruz, N-I-K-O. Mm -hmm. How many people have Nicholas spelled with an N-I-K? They could have, you know, they, he, they had many reports. They had three, mm -hmm. at least three reports that we know of now of reporting this guy. They could mm -hmm. very well have checked him out and had him placed in, yeah. uh, in a, an institution where he could have been receiving yeah. treatment. Sure, sure. And it doesn't seem to be uh, being addressed anywhere. Uh, in, the, in the local protests here in South Florida. Mr. Bergstein, we want to thank you for your time and, uh, and expertise in this area. If people want to follow your work in the future, where can they uh, read you and, uh, and follow you online? Well, uh, uh, I write for the New York Jewish Voice. It's newyorkjewishvoice.com. And our organization in South Florida, which we would like people to copy, is the Judeo, J-U-D-E-O, slash Christian Republican. Uh, club of uh, Palm Beach County, and our website is Judeo Christian no slash Republicans plural with an S dot com Judeo Christian Republicans dot com, and you can go to us and see what we are like. If you like what we do, there are Jews and Christians working together um, to preserve our, our Judeo Christian ethics in Western society, and we would love copycats. Start your organizations all over the country. If you need help. Contact me at PETFA4 at AOL, PETFA and the numerical 4 at AOL.com. I'll be glad to work with you. And, Scott, thank you so much for your time. Mr. Bernstein, thank you for your expertise and, uh, and input on this matter. Uh, I'm sure people will be following up with you uh, as we follow up with you uh, periodically. Listeners, thank you very, listeners and viewers, thanks very much. Thank you. Thank you.